Hey class, this is Mr. Roberts, and I have a, a place where I'd like for you to spend some time practicing today, uh, different things. You can see that there's a total of 10 problems, uh, and there's some just real brief instructions that says solve for one through six. Uh, seven says multiply, eight and nine say simplify, and 10 says multiply. So what happens is when you click on one of these items, and you open it up, you're gonna see an equation that I'd like for you to solve. Now, if I zoom, so I'm zooming around, I can see this is the solution area. So the solution to this is somewhere past 28, between 28 and 29. My job is to get the answer exactly. And I'm gonna do that by clicking here, right? So with only one of them showing at a time, I'm just gonna click here. And when I press enter, <laughs> it leaves a new line and you can see these two are part of this same group. If I close this, that group's gone. If I open it, here's my work still. If I want to solve this equation, um, our strategy is to first of all get the square root portion of it alone. So I'm going to do that by removing 12 from each side. So this is going to become 5, and then if I type SQRT, it gives me a square root symbol. So 5 times 5x plus 2, and then I'm going to write that that is equal to, so I left I left, the, I'm here, I'm inside the square root, I left the square root, I'm going to say equal to, and I'm taking away 12 from each side. If I take away 12 from the left-hand side, the 12's gone, 12 minus 12 is 0. But over on the right-hand side, I have 72, and if I take away 12 from there, it becomes 60. Now, one of the things I want to point out is, I'll press enter here, and it's got another line. I want to point out that there's two spots here, and you can see there's the original red, right, this is the original equation, and here's my new version of it. Now this is not a proof and it's not guaranteed confirmation, but it's very good evidence that the thing that I just wrote is equivalent to the thing that I had. So as you go step by step, what you want to do is make sure that the, your new version of what you're typing is equivalent to the version you had. Um, this equation's equivalent to the one above it because I use the subtraction property of equality. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is on each side of this, I'm going to divide by five. So this is going to become the square root. And if I don't, if I don't know the SQRT gives me square root, I can click this up arrow and it'll give me this template so I can just hit the button right here. There's the square root. Close that keyboard down. Square root again of 5x plus 2. And if I take 60 and divide by 5, I think I get 12. So watch what happens if I hit the wrong number. What if I say that, oh, I get 30? Well, you can see I didn't see a new purple line. What if I say it's close to 12? What if I say it's 10? So you can see I didn't get the same thing. So if I zoom out here, you can see, oh, way over here, right, this new purple line, tells me that this equation, the one with the purple dot, is not equivalent to the one above it because they have different solutions. Now, it's a small difference, but if I make that the number two, do you see what just happened, right? This is now where the purple line is. So you can see my red line, the green line, and the purple line are all pointing to this same point. This is an equivalent equation. It's the same as the one above. Final thing I want to do is I just want to say, hey, if I'm taking the square root of something and I'm getting an answer of 12, the square root of something, right, the square root of 5x plus 2 equals 12, the only way that that's true is, this, is if this 5x plus 2 is equal to 12 squared or equal to 144. So you can see I entered the 144 there, and as soon as I did, there's now a black line, right, it's right there, converging at the same spot. Uh, next thing I'll do is I'm going to take away 2 from both sides. I'm going to say that 5x is equal to 142. And you can see now there's a new, a new red line there. That's the same. And then my last step is I'm going to divide both sides by 5. So I'm going to get that x is equal to 142 over 5, and I'll press Enter. So it tells me here that my answer, x is 28.4 expressed as a decimal, or it's 142 fifths. So what I have right here is I have a very clear solution path. And each step along the way, I was able to check, did, is the thing that I wrote equivalent to the thing above? 
And I want you to practice this today because I think sometimes we just make up stuff and we get stuck. The other thing is I'm going to be online all day today. So if you get stuck and you're typing something and it's not equivalent to what you have, please come in and join, join me. So uh, what you're going to do then is I'm just going to screenshot this. So control, there we go. So I'm going to grab that. And I have this uh, doc. It's called Equation Manipulation. Solve each equation using Desmos to practice rewriting proportions of an equations and properties of equality. So I'm just going to go ahead and paste right here. And I might make it a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger, but this is question one. So I'm going to have a spot for all 10 of these questions. It'll look like this. And as you do your solution, you're just going to copy and paste it here. And you just need to show me all of the steps, right? Very clearly, very, very neatly written. And challenge yourself to really think about what are properties of equality? How can I validly rewrite portions of this? And again, if you get stuck at any point today, pop online and ask me for help and I'll be here um, to do that. So in addition to uh, looking over your test and very carefully considering the errors you made and things that you can do correctly, I want you to practice these things because we need to get better and we can get better. Um, so this is Mr. Roberts. I hope you have a great day and I look forward to seeing you online where perhaps I can help you.